What's up, everybody? So I had this really interesting idea to cook my way through my favorite cookbook from my favorite TV show in a new video series that I'm calling... <laughs> For those of you that don't know, Hannibal was a TV show released by NBC about Thomas Harris's famous psychiatrist serial killer, Hannibal the Cannibal, Dr. Hannibal Lecter. The series takes place years before we ever meet him behind bars, and shows us exactly what the good doctor was up to the many years before he met Clarice. The TV show's storyline is actually a mishmash of all four of Thomas Harris's Hannibal Lecter novels and presents the story, the characters, and even the timeline to us in a wholly new and different way. And despite being a beautifully well-done show, the show really just never got the viewership that it needed to carry on for more than three seasons. But despite its short run, there was never a more beautiful show on TV. Beautiful storylines, amazing characters, with performances by amazing actors. Beautiful locations, some of the best cinematography I've ever seen on a TV show, and above all, the food. Oh yes, the food. And I know what you're thinking, oh it's gross because that's people. Oh, nah, 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 nah. Shush! It's not really people, we're not really cooking people, they're not really cooking people on the show, so chill. I will say though, the show was definitely not for the faint of heart or stomach. <laughs> <laughs> Gross. But despite its more gory elements, which were done incredibly tastefully, somebody had to make all this food, and somebody had to make it look absolutely delicious. Meet Janice Poon. She's the author of the Feeding Hannibal cookbook, and was the food stylist on Hannibal for all three seasons. When it came to when becoming a food stylist, right. being inspired to be a food stylist, it was when I saw the guy choosing all the long fries. Right. And putting very thin skewers down each one so they would stand up nicely in that little red box. Right. And when I saw that, I thought, you know what? That's a job for me. Duplicity, artistry. Right. She did an amazing job with this almost impossible task of making all of this food look and seem delicious. Not to mention finding animal substitutes for human parts. And in fact, teaching Mads Mikkelsen, the character who plays Hannibal Lecter, how to cook in the kitchen. Famous chef Jose Anders was the culinary consultant on Hannibal, and it was his job to come up with the recipes, but Janice's job to present them and make them look amazing. The show had an amazing talent for pairing what was being eaten at dinner to the situation that was surrounding the characters. And indeed, you never quite knew what or sometimes who was on the table. But after three seasons, that left a lot of recipes. And so just for us fanables, Janice decided to put them all together in her cookbook, Feeding Hannibal, a connoisseur's cookbook. For those of you that actually have seen Hannibal, it will not surprise you that a lot of these recipes are intense. I mean, some of them have ingredients that I've never even heard of, and some of them have ingredients that I never really thought I'd be eating. Mmm. That's gonna be a tough one. But not all of the recipes are like that. And since we're in quarantine and I can't quite get my hands on everything, I thought it'd be a good way to start off this series by trying out one of these not-so-difficult recipes. So from my cookbook, I put together a really nice meal to serve for Mother's Day this Sunday. So I put together all of these recipes that weren't so complicated and gave them to my mom. And the one that she picked out? Spinach stuffed veal with Cumberland sauce. This recipe looks absolutely delicious and was served actually in the second episode of the first season. I didn't even plan this, but upon watching that episode again, I realized that they actually have a conversation about mothers in that scene. As hard as I tried not to, I did wind up marrying my mother. Your mother didn't cook? She did. She did. I only wish she didn't. There was this meal she used to prepare. She liked to call it oriental noodles. Spaghetti, soy sauce, bouillon cubes, and spam. I was very thin as a youngster. Gross. So offhand, this recipe doesn't look too complicated. We need a big old veal strip loin, about two pounds, and the rest of the ingredients are pretty standard. We're gonna be stuffing it with spinach and mushrooms, garlic and tomato, some breadcrumbs, and then we're gonna wrap all that in bacon and roast it in the oven until it's delicious. And on the side, we have the Cumberland sauce. 
According to the blurb before this, this is actually Janice's favorite sauce from the show because it is viscid, velvety, and crimson and has all the evocative qualities of thickening blood, but none of the unhappy circumstances. Lovely. So that's our main course, and we're going to be serving it with a side of multicolored roasted potatoes and sautéed French string beans. Now what about a starter? I picked out Caesar salad bouquets from episode six of the first season. And as an appetizer before dinner starts, I'm thinking the prosciutto roses on watermelon, if I can find good watermelon. As seen in episode seven of season one, this is at Hannibal's big fancy dinner party where we really get to see what happens to all those unfortunate people in his Rolodex. And for an after dinner dessert cocktail, I was thinking of doing punch romaine, but the orange flavors don't exactly go with the rest of the dinner. So instead I thought I'd make the incredibly simple, delicious, and raspberry flavored Chambord Champagne cocktail. But we're still not done yet. It's a tradition for me to make breakfast in bed for my mom on Mother's Day. And since I'm actually home, I'm gonna do it. But don't tell her she doesn't know that I'm doing it. But for that breakfast in bed, I'm gonna be making the chicken cheese frittata. Now this is actually a secondary recipe that's not in the show, but it's a substitute for a recipe that requires So instead, this recipe makes pretty much the same thing, but it doesn't use testicles and brains, it just uses chicken breasts. Good call for breakfast. This wonderful frittata omelet is filled with all kinds of delicious vegetables, chunks of cooked chicken, and delicious Gruyere cheese. So that is our full Mother's Day menu. We have the chicken cheese frittata for breakfast, we have prosciutto roses on watermelon for appetizers, Caesar salad bouquets for a starter, spinach stuffed veal with Cumberland sauce for dinner, and finally, the Chambord and Champagne cocktail for dessert. All right, so let's head to the store. So here we go. It's always a good time going grocery shopping. It is absolutely gorgeous out today. Get some music on here. Is there any good grocery shopping music? Is that a thing? Is that a genre of music that exists? Grocery shopping music? <laughs> this one's kind of funny. Time to see more. All right, everybody. We're here at the good old Walmart. Sub-Zero, you are no match for me. All right, let's do this. So we're all done here at Walmart. I'm just gonna check out and head on over to Aldi. I'm actually rolling up to this Aldi without a quarter. I gotta say, I'm nervous. Okay, I can do this, I can do this. I got my box. I can do this. I love Aldi, I really do. So I think we're pretty much wrapped up here at Aldi. That wasn't too bad, all things considered, without a quarter, and I'm getting a nice bicep workout. This area has a Kroger now. And here we are at Kroger. Is that a joke someone else has already done? Well, we didn't find everything we needed, and I still can't find the red currant jelly. But we did get some really pretty roses. And of course, we have some wonderful Cabernet cheese that I think will go well on a board with some other stuff. And a very pretty bottle of Prosecco. All right, we still gotta head to the liquor store, and we still gotta find red currant jelly. I'm coming for your red currant jelly. Boom, red currant jelly. Technically, it says red currant fruit spread, but we won't split hairs. Another vodka stinger! Ah! All right, so we now have the Chambord and the port, which gives us everything we need except for the veal, which will hopefully be ready for me to pick up tomorrow. I am super excited about all this. All right, everybody, it's the next day. It's Thursday the 7th, and we are off to pick up some meat. We are heading to the Princess Cafe in Beecher, Illinois. Some of the best food I've ever had. The swordfish with the mushroom risotto. Ah. Do 
not get me started on the prime rib. <laughs> meat, 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 it's all about meat today. Meat, meat. All right, meat. Speaking of meat, I think there's any meat music. Yesterday we found grocery shopping music. What if I just type meat music into YouTube? I'm sure that will have results that nobody will regret. This cafe. What's going on? Just keep him busy. Well, it's good. Officially got everything we need, folks. So next up, prep work. So the first thing we're going to make is the crouton rings for our Caesar salad bouquets. Get a nice hearty loaf of French bread or baguette and cut both ends off, and you can put them aside later to have as a snack. And there you have a good 12-inch loaf of bread. Holding the bread on its side, use a sharp, serrated knife or a bread knife and slowly and carefully cut off the bottommost slice of crust. Yeah, just like that. Then you can set that aside. Continue to do that from the bottom of your bread, giving yourself about a half inch thick slice. Go nice and slow, holding the bread as you go until you have this nice long rectangular piece of bread. Continue doing that with the rest of your bread until you have about three slices. Now make sure that you cut yourself so that you have to stop and get a band-aid and then you can continue cutting your bread. Now take your slices and cut the crusts off of both sides. Then cut your slice down the middle, giving yourself two long strips of crustless bread. Just like that. Then take a rolling pin and roll the bread strips nice and flat. Take some melted butter and a brush and brush both sides of the flattened bread strip with Julia Child amounts of butter. Next, we need to make little foil cylinders for our bread strips to toast around and give them their shape. The book isn't exactly specific on how this is done and actually recommends also trying a two inch biscuit cutter, which I didn't have. And even if I did, it would be unlikely that I'd have six of them. So we're gonna stick with foil. So just experiment with a little trial and error. Keep wrapping layers and layers of foil until you have a short, stubby cylinder about two inches in diameter. As we say in the kitchen, close enough. Now that we have those, we can begin wrapping our buttered bread strips around our cylinders. And secure those with a toothpick or two. Don't wrap the bread too snugly because the bread is going to shrink a bit as it toasts, but more on that in a moment. Continue doing that with your remaining bread strips and arrange them on a baking sheet like so. Take your bread rings and put them in a 350 degree oven to toast. The book said 10 minutes, but ours took around 20 and we turned them halfway through so we didn't burn our bottoms. We never want burnt bottoms. Just keep a close eye on them and take them out when they are toasty and golden brown. The tricky bit was getting the rings off the cylinders once they had cooled because they were pretty delicate. But we kind of got into a system of crush and wiggle. If you try this yourself, I might recommend making the cylinders as hollow as possible so they would crush completely and slide right out. But with surgeon-like delicacy, eventually they all came out, and here they are, our Caesar Salad Bouquet Crouton Rings. So that's actually it for our prep work. I really wanted to make sure I had time to try these again tomorrow if they came out wrong. Next up is our Mother's Day breakfast in bed. To see how breakfast came out and to see the rest of dinner, keep an eye out for part two. Blue, 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 ducky. Quack.